Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Liu from the Fired Up with CJ show. woo Happy New Year's, everyone! Yeah, it's the first time you've been back in, uh, well, since 2020. Yeah. If you've ever felt stuck, lost, or needed guidance from the divine, then do we have the automatic writing show in 2021. Automatic writing in 2021 show for you. Today, we'll talk about turning your journaling into channeling, asking your deepest questions, and getting answers from the source. That plus we'll talk about getting kicked off of Maui, starting Inspire Nation, the power of the woohoo eight, loss of taste and feeling, uh oh, pointing out wave, washing the heart, island escape, empty nesting all over again, daily downloads, guidance for coaching, interviews and class, three tries and five years, hearing from loved ones, on the other side, the power of celery juice, and what in the world the guides of awe has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woo! And a happy birthday to your book. Thank you. It just launched, right? I'm going to actually have a little chakra seven action. Woo! Very nice. yeah, Lime and comes rose. Out three days after this show goes live, so it is. It is going to have its birth on January 29th. This is a book that has been five, nearly five years in the making wow. with at least three, if not four iterations. This was, I'm so proud of this book. I'm so incredibly proud of this book, but this one was the, I don't know, you can almost say the hump to get over. Something special needed to come out and burst through the dam. And then it's easier after that because the next book is already coming in a torrent to me. It's really, really cool. Um, and about magic and manifestation and creating with our minds. And it's really, really cool. But this is the book. And I remember when this book came to us uh, almost five years ago, I'd been thinking about it. Jessica was on a hike with me and she says, you need to write a book on automatic writing. It's changed our lives. And I'm sure we'll share about that in a moment. She goes, you need to share uh, to write a book on it. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going down that right, that road, communicating with guides and angels and loved ones on the other side. That's somebody else's job to me. I'm a life coach, very spiritual, but a life coach. Automatic writing, which I do on a daily basis, had something else to say. <laughs> so this is five years in the making, this book. It is the first time we attempted uh, to write this. I did not know how to to ride the wild horse. And so I, um, Paul Selle, he's my all-time favorite spiritual author. He knows how to communicate very eloquently with his guides and they just dictate word for word. With myself, I get, I don't know if I get in the way too much, but I end up having these long discussions with the guides and it can be the same guides or it could be your own guides. I get in these long discussions with the guides and I ended up with this manuscript that was like a massive how-to manual on being human, which is fantastic, but it's not a book <laughs> on automatic writing. Wow, a book so on being saying. human. So you had to edit that gigantic book and turn it into a very tactical book, or how is it? How are book these two things? One, we had to scrap. It was too much. Mm -hmm. Wrote the whole thing up. Completely gave up on it. Book number two did the same thing a couple years later. I was in, I don't know if we want to say a more centered and grounded place, but we'll call it that. And still ended up with something that had a lot on automatic writing, but the guides really wanted to share all of these deep, profound lessons. And coming through my mind, which is not historically the most organized, it was still this massive manuscript. Took version two, gave it to, I think, two different editors and came away with the conclusion, nope, can't run with it. Mm. Version three, which I'm gonna guess this is actually maybe four if I think about it, version three was done first, me being interviewed, audio format. Mm -hmm, I remember and that. Turned, and we thought that was gonna go well, but it didn't get, it didn't get, this is a, Yes, there's inspiration, and inspiration comes through in the audio version. 
But when you're writing an owner's manual for how to fly a plane, it's probably good that you write down the nuts and bolts. Mm. And so after it was recorded, I then had an editor go back through all of my classes and write everything up. And then we put the whole thing together from there. It is brilliant. It is amazing. If I was to do it all over again, I would have just started from scratch because where I am five years in on the process is so sharp with my automatic writing is so tactical now that I can get out the most detailed sentence after sentence where it relatively does not need to be edited versus all of the garbly gook before. So it's a brilliant book, but it was very circumnavigation. <laughs> what would be the word for it? Not circuitous. It was a very winding path. So you would, so you wouldn't actually ha like speak and have someone edit it. You would just no. like, it's it's your automatic writing itself is so highly cultivated that you could just type it out right now, and like boom, it would be a book. I and would type it out now. It would be a book. I would also go back because if there's one thing I've learned after five years or we're almost six years on the mic now, is how to tighten things up. Mm. And so I go back and say, how can I tighten? How can I tighten? How can I tighten? Mm. The book came out very tight, but it took a lot of work mm. to get there. Mm. I love it. I'm very biased about it. Oftentimes authors feel, and I know I have in the past, that while they love their book, is it good enough? Is it this? Is it that? I'm very proud of this one. This has mm. been such an effort. Um, that I love it. And I'm, I'm, I'm not apologetic in saying that I'm very proud of this book and what it will do. And just for people who to give context, this is your fourth book, you had two, two or three books on um, barefoot walking and running, you had a book on ADHD. Mm -hmm. Is this your now your fourth book? Or what book is this? Yeah, this is the, the fourth published book, there have been other books written that have not been released, and we'll see whatever happens with those. Um, but this is the first. So there was College Confidence with ADD, mm -hmm. which came out uh, just over a decade ago. Um, then there was Barefoot Running, which became an indie bestseller and then became an Amazon bestseller that did incredibly well. Um, and then that got put, picked up in a two book deal with Random House, who then also published Barefoot Walking, re-released Barefoot Running, never did as well as a re-release learnings. Um, and barefoot walking. And then um, we hit the skitter in Maui years ago. And we were lost and we were struggling. And I had a second near death experience and Jessica got oh. very sick, which actually started us on our path into automatic mm -hmm. writing and started us on our path to where we are today. Wait, tell us, tell me a little bit about that. How did it start your path? So we were on Maui mm -hmm. and we were, first off, it is, it, it was at the time, I think today remotely it's easier. It was at the time hard to run our business remotely from Maui. And um, I also got injured, which really knocked us off of our A gum as far as income goes. We were working on a mindful running program, a video based program which was awesome, but we were ahead of our game, ahead of our time on that one, and we spent a year on it. And at the time, same time, we were meditating de daily and holding space for three, four hours a day at a meditation center, hmm. plugged into spirit, but lost, CJ. We didn't know where we were supposed to go or what we were supposed to do. Hmm. And so by the last few months on Maui, we had exhausted our book deal. We had exhausted our savings. We had exhausted ourselves. Jessica got sick. We didn't know it at the time. It was mold toxicity poisoning. I'm, um, you know, hopping around on my crutches or doing whatever I am to get better and then had another accident. We're out of alignment. And it wasn't until just about we got kicked off of Maui and really once we left Maui, that I embraced a process that I had been taught loosely years earlier. And I completely rearranged this thing and came up with my own version of automatic writing and started diving into it on a daily basis. And, and it wasn't like you dive in to talk with the guides and anybody can do it and it's different guides for everybody. It wasn't like they said, hi, Michael, we've been waiting for you. Mm. 
However, from day number one, they're like, oh, great. Glad you're here. Let's help you get your life on track now, mm. shall we? Wow. So you, and how did you originally, like, where did you get a sense of how to even create this thing? Like, how, what was your genesis of this? Or is, it, or is it self-created? Everything has some seed planted. Mm -hmm. The technique is our own. However, I mean, automatic writing in some form, you can go back to the Bible and you've got people writing from God. You can go way back before that. Um, however, I had near-death experience number two. I came back to Maui. I met a gentleman who um, had some very interesting techniques that were helping me to heal and and plugged me up to all sorts of things and did something with a, called, something called the Lucia lamp, which is, uses a, a strobing light for healing. Amazing. Wow. His life partner was teaching a class on accessing the Akashic Masters and the Akashic Records. Mm. And I, they offered for me to take that class, both Jessica and I did. And there was a technique of having the Akashic Masters right through you in a sense, automatic writing. Mm. The last day of class, we practiced all together. I got the most dumbfounding prophetic words of wisdom. You're going to speak before millions on a mountaintop. You're going to be a leader. You're going to have this greatness. You're going to teach. You're going to all this amazing stuff. And I had to read it back before the class. And I thought this was my ego gone awry, that all of the things written down on paper were just me trying to prop myself up. And I got really upset. Oh, wow. Okay. Really upset because I thought I was trying to showboat. Oh, wow. Fascinating. I, that did not work with whatever wounds I had in my ego. Mm. That didn't work. And so I dropped that process cold like another year and a half, two years, until I met with this woman again who took me through a, a past life. She was trained directly by Dolores Cannon, and she took me through a past life regression session. And the same dang things came up. Wow. You're going to speak from a mountaintop, and I can see the visual because you could see it. Before millions of people before you, you're going to teach, you're going to lead all of these different things. When did and you start teaching? It was when you were in North Carolina, right? I didn't start. So I started, I got back into my coaching. Automatic writing had me get back into my coaching when I was in New Jersey. Okay. Um, and then, yes, I was probably teaching when I was back in North Carolina. That's when we produced the automatic writing experience, a video-based program. It, it's interesting. I probably shared with you that uh, Dr. Irvin Laszlo, he's the uh, two-time Nobel Peace Prize nominee. He's been on the show numerous times. And um, he has his own foundation and he's worked with the UN for decades. And he's, he's got this idea for this new way of uh, political systems and, and structuring economics so that it's, it's a we rather than a me, so that we're mm -hmm. all in this together because we're on one um, closed loop planet. Mm -hmm. There's only so much of this, there's only so much of that, not from a place of lack, but everything that's here is here. Everything mm. that's not is not. And we get to work within this closed chain system. Mm. And it's interesting what automatic writing told me. Because just a few weeks ago, I'm about to cry. He said, I've got a symposium coming up in March. Mm. And I want you to write the white paper on this. Oh, a team, whoa. A team of two of us with two of us backing us up. A new way for the entire planet. Wow. What's his name again? Dr. Irvin Laszlo. Amazing human being. Wow. Wow. Very exciting, Michael. Super that exciting. That came out of automatic writing. It was said in a cry. That was said six, seven, eight years ago. Wow. But my ego didn't buy any of that. Who are you? You know, the who are you, you know, imposter syndrome to think that you can automatic writing has been right about everything mm. and, and so we got back to new jersey back i had never really lived in new jersey before we ended up in jessica's childhood bedroom twin mattresses on the floor you have a car in the driveway can't afford to even register it and automatic writing is knocking on the door mm. saying 
you need to start a show. Mm. Here's what it's going to be about. Here's how you're going to do it. Here's how you're going to get back into coaching again so that your mother-in-law doesn't have to get a second job at 70 years of age to support you guys. (laughs) And it all unfolded. If people are wondering what's automatic writing, each morning I would go quiet, go into prayer and meditation, very simple process. And I would basically ask the universe, guide, source, and I can, I can go to whom I ask. I can share that in a minute. And I say, what do I need to know? And off to the races, I would get guidance, wisdom, far beyond anything I know, but also day-to-day nuts and bolts. Here's what you're going to do, and here's how to do it, and here's why you were so lost. Mm. Here's how we help get you on track. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, so this is actually... What's so interesting to me is this information came way, way before, like six or seven years before all these things came to fruition. And what's amazing is that you remember, right? Because I have like a lot of automatic writing stuff in my own way of doing it. And I don't often remember everything, but I sort of have like vague, sketchy kinds of... so. Um, have you gone back to your um, writings from six to seven years ago and found the original visioning of the, what you're doing now? It would be great to go back to that. In fact, the, the past life regression I had on a keychain on a USB that I carried around with me for years. When we were back in New Jersey, I reread all of it. Mm. And those things stuck out to me so much that I have carried them forth. And in fact, I included stuff about that in the book, even before wow. this Dr. Irvin Laszlo piece came about. So they were very profound. But when I teach automatic writing, I, I teach anchoring, which is to say, write it one side of the day. So if you write it first thing in the morning, read it in the evening. If you re- write it in the evening, read it first thing in the morning to mm-hmm. anchor it in, because mm-hmm. there's also a frequency to it, way beyond the words that you get. There's a frequency to whatever you get, which is why I've worked with a lot of people who are in a very dark place. And right now that's like depression is extremely common. And their their coat, what I call or can see as a heavy coat, is taken off of them because of the vibrational alignment. Paul Selig's guides talk about going to the upper room, mm-hmm. getting in a cord. And so you're getting into a frequent, of, um, yeah, vibrational alignment, harmony. Mm-hmm with the words and that shifts you right alone there. Mm, mm, interesting. All right. So when you think about this book, what do you most want people to get out of it? I believe I'm very biased about this. And, 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 you know, I'm on a big mission last year. I was down meeting with the Nobel laureates. Uh, I was invited down there to the Nobel prize peace summit and the Yucatan. My goal is to get this into the hands of everybody. No, everybody wants to, every author wants to do it. But I view this as a mission where you buy three books. You get one for yourself, one for family, one for somebody in need, whomever that is. Mm -hmm. Because if we're operating from a different operating system, Mm -hmm. if we upgrade the operating system on the computer of you, you inherently make different decisions. Mm -hmm. They're made with greater kindness. They're made, made with greater compassion. They're not coming from that place of fear or lack or of a reactionary state. And the entire world changes. I mean, you've heard me say for years, our mission, raise people's vibration, elevate consciousness, shift humanity. And I see this very biased about it, but it's not mine. I I had lots of arguments with the guides about, I don't want to write this. You've got the wrong guy for the job. And that's probably why it took me three times to hammer this in that you're the right guy for the job. But I know how much this shifts people's lives. When I coach, it's the first thing I teach. When I hold classes, it's the first thing I teach. It is the fundamental level for everything. Why? Because my belief could be a limiting belief is that I can't have the answers for me. You can't have the answers for you. None of us can have the answers from our small egoic thinking mind. This is not picking on our mind. We could be Einstein, we could be brilliant, but we need to get to something even more brilliant than this operating system that comes. It's a very animalistic system, fight or flight, hormone, sex, food, sleep. It's not a system that was wired specifically for 
How do we go into spaciousness? How do we go into consciousness? What is best for all of us? Why do I want to leave that one thing for somebody else instead of taking it for myself? Mm -hmm. When you go into, I call it awe, automatic writing experience. The guides told me that. When you go into that state of awe, you're no longer in that small mind. You're plugged into the oneness. Mm -hmm. That's when the greater answers come. That's when you find your path, which... As Einstein said, you can't solve a problem from the same level of energy it was created. Mm -hmm. If your life is a, quote, mess, and none of our lives are a mess. They're messy, but they're all on purpose and path. But when you are in this mess, you can't solve it from the same mind that got you into it. Yeah, you know, I'm what um, this is making me um, tune into is that um, we're in a world in which many of the things that we look toward getting answers to, mm-hmm. oh, the president will give us answer. The media will give us answers. Um, my work, you know, like we, 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 um, we lose so much of our own um, sense of things because we give so much of our power away to officials who know best for us. And I think that one of the best things about automatic writing is we put the power back into our own hands because really, um, at least when I do automatic writing, I know that I'm tuning into a higher vibrational version of myself and I'm asking myself what is best for me. And and I thought about this recently because I was asking about my uh, meditation purpose, like um, I had meditation practice. And I was asking a teacher because I'm curious about their answer and it will feed into my like database of knowledge and kind of like just gestaltish like sea of information s- swimming around me. But really, when, when, if I really want to know the real answer, it's inside of me. So unless I have a way of getting at that internal answer, um, I'm navigating um, not from myself. I'm navigating from the outside, and that causes all sorts of problems when you navigate from the outside. So I think that's one of the things, you know, when you talk about societal change, if all of us were to just navigate from a higher version of ourselves, it would change the world. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's that higher self that you're plugging into, not the scared self that says, oh my God, what about this and that? And that's kind of the reactionary self. But the higher self, if you consider it from a spiritual point of view, you can call it, if you're not spiritual, just call it your inner wisdom. If you are spiritual, Picture that there is the you here that's embodied, but that's just one fraction of your soul or your higher self. And, and as the expression goes, the high, your, your small self is just in the higher self. We can call it 3D, 5D, it's up there. However we want to look at it, the higher self is still on the other side of the veil. It has the big picture. It knows why you're here. It's happy to guide you. In fact, it's trying moment by moment, but we push it away. But if we have a process where we can tap in and listen and turn up the volume, rather than push that small, still voice away, the voice that never steers us wrong, but we choose not to listen to, nah, 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 and we smash our foot on the gas, and then we got a boo-boo or something. But if we listen to the other side of the veil, everything changes. Mm. Well, I mean... What's interesting is that, you know, six or seven years ago, you got um, a clarity on your path and you were like, nope, just not ready, not going there, (laughs) not going to approach it. And um, I assume that this happens, like I'm actually going through a very similar kind of thing. I channeled all this, I had transmissions, I would say. Um, transmissions from my inner trans higher self transmitting to my ordinary CJ self and taking notes. And yeah. it's so hard when you hear these things to know, like, is that just me going berserk thinking mm. I'm on an ego maniac, you know, like what, or am I wishing or hoping, or is this thing really real? And it's hard to know. And, and I think the thing that you're talking about our ego your egoic self is pushing, saying, 
oh no, that's too big. Or what are you thinking about? Why you, what's, you know, and, um, you get into, um, a need for a paradigm shift. How did your automatic writing subsequent to having this grand vision, um, get you through all those challenging points in which you're doubting yourself, your ego is like, I'm having a hard time. Why is this happening? I mean, you just went through this phenomenal trip where you have traveled across the West Coast and you were using automatic writing throughout that whole time and trying to make sense of what seemed to be nonsensical. Um, how did it help you during hard times? So it's in, and, and those, those are like two or three questions wrapped into one. Let's see what yeah. we can do with these. Yeah. Um, back in the day when we started inspire nation i was checking it in my way which is going to nature mm. having talks sounds silly i don't know how else to put it talks with the trees talks with the crickets there is a, a main tree in the in the middle of florham park new jersey where somebody had hammered eyebrows and a nose on this tree probably in the 60s and i said i was talking <laughs> to the tree spirit spirit <laughs> but in essence going quiet and listening and saying, does this feel, feel? Does this feel real? Does this feel true? And when we talk about intuition, there is always a feeling state behind it I, I, that gives you a clear sense of, is this right? Or is it the best way I describe it, icky? Icky is the egoic mind. Now something can be really scary and still feel true we were meant to be in the west i'm going why on earth are we being steered here i don't know so automatic writing is a teaching vehicle it will give you what you need to help you on your path but it won't just give you the answer it will help you on your my god it gave us inspire nation it gave us coaching and it, and it will teach you things but it wants you also to think for yourself and so if it just said, here's your whole life, you're going to stop here, you're going to stop there, you're going to uh, run into this hardship here, this person's going to die there, this is going to take, why are you, you know, just go sit on the couch, fasten the seatbelt and grab some popcorn. <laughs> but you know when it's right, when it comes out of automatic writing and, you, and it says, you're supposed to go west. Actually, it had said, I think it was the day that Jessica said, we've got to go to Palm Springs and we were in Sedona. And I said, wow, in automatic writing, I got go west, young man. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And here we are in Joshua Tree, which is a magnificent place to spend the winter. We definitely are craving greenery when the time is right. They've had a hard time here at this house. We have a main house and a guest house. It's a little retreat sector. And the guest house, they were putting in a septic system. And the... Uh, bulldozer uh, tractor guy is like, it's a miracle I got this thing in because I just had to pray and pray and pray because there's so much hardened granite beneath your place. I've never seen it in the 25 or 28 years wow. that I've done this job. Mm. The show has grown over 55% in the last year and has been on a massive burst in mm. the last month. All great things, I mean, things keep happening, but magic upon magic upon magic has taken place since we've got here. I'm convinced because we're grounded on this granite. Wow, that's amazing. So you found like planet Earth. <laughs> You're grounded at home, but like in ways that like solid as a mountain, like literally you're on that go. mountain that you've been, that you saw six or seven because you're on a mountain, right? Well, we're on a, a on a, a big hill, not as big as the mountain that we were on in Colorado, where we broadcast from. But we are up above it. We're considered on a mesa with the town down below mm. us. So we always tend to find ourselves on our high spots, broadcasting to millions beneath. I don't mean beneath as in less than. I mean geographically, the elevation that we're at. Mm. It, and that was all there in awe. Now I do check it. When I do my automatic writing, and it's, and it's in, in our book, Awe, Automatic Writing Experience, I teach, here's how you can check with ego. And so I'll literally, if something comes to me that is too powerful, Michael, you get to do X, Y, Z, you're going to be blah, 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 I will then write an automatic writing. 
is this really coming from automatic writing or is this my ego? And I'll check it multiple different ways because particularly early on in automatic writing, ego would dive in. Mm. But I actually learned that there's techniques that you can actually allow ego to write when it comes in. And then we actually clear ourselves and get ourselves lighter. Mm. So it worked to my advantage. Ego could come in all at once. Now I'm very discerning. It's, it's quite easy to tell. Mm, wow, interesting. Okay, so you've actually really refined your processes. So in the book, what am I going to get? I'm going to get what what kinds of things? Tell me a little bit about like just kind of a high level outline of your book. High level outline, you're going to learn how to do automatic writing. You're going to learn the best times to do automatic writing for your unique cycle. We all have our own individual cycle through the day every single one of us. You're gonna learn how to get into the hypnagogic space or the space on the other side of the veil where you can hear things a lot more clearly. But we also have a whole section on manifestation in the book because not only when you're on the other side do you hear more clearly, but you can plant your hopes, wishes, and dreams and see them come true. Mm. So you have a whole section on manifestation. We have how you can use awe as your coach, automatic writing experience as your coach, awe to set up a routine, awe to help you build a business, and then some of the fun and kind of uh, woo-woo-y, if that wasn't woo-woo-y enough. And, <laughs> and I'm having to embody this. Like I said, years ago, I fought against this. Now I admit, I channel, I speak with guides, I'm out there. I'm, this is the book, the handbook on this whole thing. I might as well embody it. Even. Right. When I coach, I'm listening to the guides of awe. When we're talking, I'm plugged in with your heart, which came out of automatic writing, and I'm plugged into the guides as well. And so in the book, you learn how to do that. So your experience throughout the day is enriching because you are now able to hear from the guides over time. You know, it's not instant for most people. But at first, you don't know what's ego. You don't know what's the voice in your head. You don't know what in the world's going on. But over time, you make this cosmic connection to where you're hearing from source, from spirit 24 mm seven. -hmm. You learn who you want to tap into. Mm -hmm. So when I say the guides of awe, there are different guides for every single one of us. Mm -hmm. Now I plug into the archangels. You can choose your archangels. I plug into mother earth. You can choose mother earth. Napoleon Hill did, did of uh, think and grow rich. He did automatic writing. He called it his boardroom. In his boardroom, he had uh, Washington, he had Lincoln, they would regularly get into fights. He had um, Thomas Edison, who was actually still alive at the time, who he told about once. And Edison chuckled as if to say, yep, that's right, I'm there with you. He wow. had all of these people on a board around him that would have these discussions with him and he would just take notes hmm. based on it and learned from it. And so I regularly go to and teach you in automatic writing how to connect with spirit that's there all the time, with your guardian angels, literally with source, with God, Allah, Jesus, Je uh, Jehovah, Buddha, Mother Mary, whomever it is. And also, it sounds like a sales thing. If that wasn't enough for 1999, we'll throw in, we'll throw in loved ones on the other side. Yeah. So my best man, Jack, best friend and best man, Jack was 89 years young when he was my best man. He's crossed over and, and he is, um, he's not just my biggest cheerleader on the other side. He's got the whip. And so he's been keeping me going with this. <gasps> His two big things are always take better care of the pookie. Right. So, uh, actually what, how he says it is take better care of that baby doll. Right. That's, your, that's his language. beautiful baby. wife, Jessica. Yes. Yeah. And, and, um, he has had a vision from me since the first day he met me as, um, having the energy of a Wayne Dyer mm -hmm. and, and being able to share. And, and Wayne Dyer is amazing. I am, <laughs> I, he, he is phenomenal, but being along that same path. And so on the other side, Jack is continuously cracking the whip saying, this is your direction. This is your path. Stay on it. Don't get lost. Don't waver. Stay focused. Stay the course. Yay, Jack. And then I have others. I have Auntie Pua from uh, Maui, who is was a Hawaiian kapuna, a spiritual elder who passed away. And she's always coming to me with messages of love and aloha. And then I have a dear, dear friend, Carla, who passed over, crossed over 
two weeks after doing a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat with Jessica down in the Yucatan, and I communicate with her on a regular basis, but I can choose, mm. and I teach in awe how you can fine tune the dial. Somebody's passed on, uh, a loved one, whomever, you can tune into them, but you can also, you could turn into the spiritual elders of the land. Mm-hmm. And I think we need that now more than anything. You can ask for permission of the land. You can get guidance from the land. When a lion literally showed up on video at our home in Colorado, I could tune into the spirit of the lion and ask, what's going on? Who are you? And so you get all of this out of automatic writing as it's taking you deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole into finding out what's true for you, Mm -hmm. discovering your path and direction, discovering who you are, helping you know that you're not alone and really right now is the easiest time in our lives to be lonely we are so isolated even when we're on zoom we're on this we're on that we have our master class going on in our boot camp it's very easy to feel alone because we're in a digital world right now and plugging into awe and having loved ones who've passed on or guides who are always by your side say hey cj we're here for you how are you doing we got your back you're loved i'm not sure anything could be more important right now Mm. all right so um as we conclude talking about your book tell me about what your guides want to tell the audience that's listening now so well they always have two messages and 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 they're not so much into uh, selling the book as much as they want you to go get the book. So they're not going to say, go for 19.99 and go blah, blah, blah. But they would say, read the book, it changes your life. But what they always want me to say, you are love, you came from love, you couldn't be anything other than love. You have a greatness inside of you far greater than you ever could have imagined. Learn how to top into, tap into awe, tap into your higher self, tap into your deepest inner wisdom, tap into your own guides. And a future will unfold before you far greater than anything you could have ever imagined that was always planned for you and always waiting for you. But because of your collective amnesia, you haven't been able to tap into until now. Woo-hoo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Loving that. There. <laughs> <laughs> that came out pretty fast. You have a fast talking guy. <laughs> wow. Ah, ah, inspiring. Thank you, Michael. You are most, most welcome. And so, like I say, I I truly believe everybody get a copy for yourself, get a copy for a family member. And if you know someone who is really struggling, get them a copy. It can make all the difference in the world for them. I have seen so many people where the light has gone on. That's I'm hearing that's another section in, in the book that you didn't mention, Michael, is it teaches you how to rewire your subconscious. Because you're in this hypnagogic state, you're in this deep, basically self-hypnosis state, or self-hypnotic state. You can get at your subconscious, and this is something Carl Jung talked about, what, 150 years ago. There's a beautiful book on automatic writing from 1920 that talked about in the 1850s how incredible a technique it was used worldwide for rewiring your subconscious Jessica and I are just bringing it back now, or myself and the guides and Jessica are bringing it back now, because you can rewire your mind. Mm, lovely. Um, Michael Sandler, how do we get the book? You go to Amazon. That's the simplest place. So, okay. I want you to go, if you are out and it's COVID safe, go knock on the door of your local bookseller. Have them get it in for you because that would be awesome to support them. If you can't do that, it's available on Amazon. So there may be a pre-order when this comes out. It may already be on sale. We already went through the first print run or on the second print run. They're asking me if I need to do an even bigger print run on this. Um, it's huge. And it is, it is such. I, I'm having a vision in my mind of our new logo, which is the Phoenix, the Golden Phoenix rising from the ashes. And this is like the handbook to help us all rise from the ashes. So so go to Amazon, get the book. Um, you can also find out about our video-based program at automaticwriting.com. Again, automaticwriting.com. But if nowhere else, you start with the book and it is a life changer. Because I am, I was lost. I was, I'm, I'm hearing amazing grace in my head right now. I was totally lost. I was sharp. I was 
a sharp, smart, everything you want to describe as somebody who's got it going on. And my life, Jessica's life as well, we were falling apart because we were trying to operate from the fear-based mind. Mm -hmm. And when we got to automatic writing, and, and I'm hearing automatic writing is not journaling. Journaling is I did this, I did that, I, 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 I. That's the fear-based I, I, Captain. An automatic writing, you are loved. Here's your path, dear one. Everything will be okay. Everything will be all right. Here's what you get to do. And we started listening to that and everything changed. Mm, lovely. Thank you. So you're most welcome. So on that note, last time we spoke COVID, uh, I almost said, wow, the cat got my tongue. I wanted to say last time we spoke COVID. Um, last time we spoke, you were having face challenges. And I was going, is it possible that you could have COVID? Well, well, then. yeah. So I, it started, um, my, my face got numb. I saw the doctor. She said to call the like call her again if it starts moving into my fingertips and my tongue. And the week after I spoke to you, my whole body was numb. Like everything was numb. I lost my, I could, I had like, I could taste like sharp taste. Like I could take a mint and be like, that's a mint. But I lost um, taste and I was numb all over. And um, interestingly, probably about five or six years ago, I had a similar kind of thing happen. I went to, um, I, I basically had a big spiritual opening and then had for like a month lost my taste. And I felt like I was um, high every day, lost I my think taste. I remember this. Yeah, lost my taste <laughs> and was numb. So I wasn't sure if this was kind of a reenactment because I didn't have anything of that same magnitude energetically happening as far as I knew. And, um, so I went to the doctor though to be safe and they put me in the mer I called up and I was like, do I really have to go? And they're like, yes, you have to go. In fact, I'm like, well, where do I go? And they're like, you have to go to the emergency room. So it, I was probably in the emergency room for four hours. Um, I was having heart earlier when it first came out, I had really sharp pains in my body. Like it was like, Someone was stabbing me with sick knot. It was all at once. And I was like, ah! And uh, so they gave me an EKG to make sure there was no heart issues. They gave me a neurological ex exam to make sure that the numbness was on both sides so that I wasn't having a stroke. Yeah. And then they um, um, thought, you know, they did some other things to make sure that there was no brain damage. And they're like, we can't figure out what, then they actually took a series of tests to make sure it was in dehydration. So we eliminated like, you know, almost all the very scary possibilities. I'm going to go in for an MRI next Monday. How are you feeling now? Um, well, I, so one of the things that I talked to, of course, you and I have, at, 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 um, we we're so lucky because we have as resources, various medical intuitives, guess whatever. So I talked to a medical intuitive that looked at my picture and she said, and I have a, a local doctor that is also very intuitive and um, gave me some uh, liver supplements and then also asked me to do an, a regimen of celery juice, which I, I saw that I, in fact, listened to your interview with Anthony Williams, who is a medical intuitive that is really purporting the, the magic of celery juice. And I have to say it does. My skin looks different. Like I'm like, I, yeah, my skin is clear, like it's clear and radiant. I, so the celery juice is pretty amazing. It's supposed to detox your body with the idea that um, some of this may be just having too many toxins flooding my body and needing to just one detox so that my, my systems can get like a reboot. So that was happening um, over the last couple of weeks. My, my feeling is still a little bit numb. Mm -hmm. But my taste has come back. And I would say like where it was like a nine out of 10, like feeling super numb. I'm probably like at a two uh, and I don't really know that maybe I would say that when you do the spiritual work, like so many things, when you're doing healing work, energetic kind of practices, lots of these things can happen. And so I, I'm just chalking it up to that. So it's been, um, wow, wow, wow. Kind of a crazy last couple of weeks, but I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm like 
it, it's, you know, if I went from a nine as being really bad, scared, and actually my husband couldn't get to go to go into the um, emergency room. So I'm there by myself thinking like, I think I may die. Like I'm, I could be dying <laughs> in the next half hour, I, I think. I don't know, but I think this is energetic. So there is like this kind of calm presence and then like, Oh, but I could die. But calm presence, or I could die. <laughs> so I went back and forth, and then every single day, it like it got better. Like you know, on a scale of like you know zero to ten, zero being like no symptoms at all, it would go down like a 0.5, 0.25. So gradually, every single day, it's gotten better. So um, I'm 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 thankful for that. I, I just had this. Um, really phenomenal meditation retreat. And I think that that helped. Um, yeah. Um, it's, yeah, the, the meditation retreat was, um, tuning in and every single day, like anytime I would do a meditation, I would just like cry every single time. And, um, without any conscious understanding or content or material surrounding that crying, it was just this like, and, and someone actually said something beautiful that I really liked um, that I wanted to share is that crying can sometimes be like washing your heart. Yeah. And it was just felt so like after just like a week worth of crying, um, it was pretty um, cathartic of just cleansing out. And then afterwards with this meditation, you really turn tune, you like shut down everything, mm -hmm. but awareness, which is what you're talking is you tap into your highest level of consciousness. And when I did that, um, relating this to your book, um, when I tuned into this higher, first of all, um, there was so much fear. So I can really relate to what you're talking about. There's so much fear of just letting go of what I understand and just going free falling into this feeling like a free falling, but really all it is is letting go of this illusion that you're separate mm -hmm. and recognizing that you are connected to something extraordinary, really extraordinary. But there's a fear that was coming in for me. Like, what if I'm not good enough? What if, you know, all these kinds of things that's completely or related to the things that you're saying earlier, what if I'm not good enough? How about if I, how is my life going to change? Maybe, you know, this is going to be scary. What if, you know, this, I change and, you know, I'm not going to be happy about, you know, all these kinds of stories. And so I was just letting go, letting go. And, um, uh, finally I, I, let go so much that I, you become literally one with everything and you feel everything. And I, I was thinking like this would be like a beautiful, there are times when I would feel um, the Buddhists believe that there are 85 positive qualities that one can actually experience and the litany of like negative qualities. Mm -hmm. And the more you increase your consciousness, um, the more you're able to, remove the karmic traces of those negative qualities and only experience these 85 qual um, positive qualities. That's like enlightenment, right? When you can feel you remove all negative um, karmic traces and you only feel those 85. And so I'm, I'm not, an, at, I'm not, I don't know how far I am from that path, but I don't think I'm close. But what I did when, when you kind of let go of everything and you tune into what's there, you can feel beauty or feel silence or all those things that, you know, you see on um, meditation candles. <laughs> They're qualities that you could actually feel within you. Um, and one of the things when I was just one with everything unexpectedly was, and I was trying not to um, deny what was coming in and I just allowed whatever was coming in. Um, I felt the pain and suffering of people who have COVID and are in hospitals alone. And I felt the pain of mother earth and it was so heartbreaking, but 
also illuminating to actually feel that compassion and love. Like it's not all about puppy dogs and unicorns. Like it's sometimes you feel the pain of people suffering and that was really interesting. And I thought, oh no, is this my path in life to feel the pain and suffering of other people? Wait, where's the exit door? Please let me leave this immediately. Um, but I did that and, um, I, then all of a sudden what came in from this higher consciousness was the, I assume, I don't even know what these 85 qualities were, but I feel like courage, that this huge sense of courage and like, you can do this. And then, um, I looked at my fence, right? But I was looking outside of myself and tuning into the great expanse of awareness and I could see the sun. And then when I tuned into the sun, it became an array of like, it was like a, glo a, a sphere, a globe of Buddhas all wow. around me. And I think all of us, this is not, this is not unique to CJ. Like, oh, I'm so blessed. I mean, I, I am so blessed. And all of us are blessed like that. Every, no, it's almost going to make me cry. Every single one of us is surrounded by archangels, those that have passed, um, we have we have so much support, and it is out there, and they want to help us so dearly, and they want to talk to us, and they're they're sending us signals, and then they love us, and they, but we have to ask, we have to make the inquiry to ask, but they are around and. Um, I was just in awe, um, feeling just this like incredible support that has always been there, that is always there for us if we make the time to communicate. And when I did tune into it, um, I had this fear. I thought, I don't think I can physically handle this much energy. You know, I don't because each time I feel the energy, I'm like, my body is literally vibrating. And I'm like, I can't, I don't know if I can hold all this energy that you want me to hold in order for me to move in the next path. And I was scared. And all of a sudden, like, I could feel this, like, energy coming into me. And it was so strong. And then, like, my heart, like the Grinch, just like shattered into like, I don't know how many pieces. And it opened up and it just felt like a beak, like this kind of, you know, like a lighthouse, a flight, which was like shining. And um, I think what, what I felt and what I want everyone to know yeah. is that we have infinite love within each and every one of us. It's infinite. And we can hold these vibrations in ways that we could have never imagined. There is an infinite love surrounding all of us, inside of us, and it's just having the courage to believe that it's there, to have a process like the one that you're talking about to knock on the door and say, hey, I'm here and I really need your help and I'm scared. You know, I need a vision. I need your help. Um, I'm confused. I'm lost. Um, I need your encouragement and support. And it's there for you. It is there for you to give you wisdom and guidance. And so I just want to relay this back to the things that we we're talking about because it really is there. I have no words to add. <laughs> you, you've said it. It's, it's everything, and we can plug into everything, and we are everything, and we come from everything. And 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 once we have an experience like you're describing, or you dive into a practice like automatic writing, you get it, and it changes everything because you get the big picture. Mm -hmm. And the big picture is the story is not the story; it's story. Everything you see going on around you is story, meaningful, and there are things we can do about it. But it is 
infinitesimally small compared to the big picture of what's going on. Suffering, suffering, it's real. People are passing on, that's real. Um, people are losing their houses, that's insane, it's real. But when we can realize who we are, what we are, where we come from, who we're surrounded by, and what we are made of, and, and, and the, the nakedness, the non-word, the nakedness, like the nakedness, the nakedness, what this is, this love that infuses us, that is us, that we come from, that, that everything is interwoven into, life changes, the tenor changes, everything about it changes. Our direction inherently changes because now, once you can recognize a chord, if you're singing next to somebody and you can't hear what they're singing, it's impossible to get into harmony or attunement with them. But now, once you can hear them, you can get into harmony, and all of a sudden, and you felt it, I felt it, the harmonics, that, that warble of being in exact frequency of somebody else. If you're not sure what it is, have somebody play you two singing bowls mm. together, like in a singing bowl shop, and all of a sudden, your mind is blown because you're non-local. You can't figure out where in the world the sound is coming from. Mm. That's who you are. Mm. Love it. And there are a whole bunch of things on here. We can get to that. We'll get to it later. <laughs> I think this is enough. I mean, this is beyond, beyond, I think, this whole conversation. Um, yeah. One of I'm, my favorites. I'm so ecstatic about your experiences. This is amazing. Yeah, you know, I was thinking, um, you know, it's it's funny because I bet if we were to look at the very first show that we did, and we were to look at this show, you could see the um, arcs and changes in our own like delivery, in our presence, in our, even our voice. Like I know people are like, your voice has dropped down an octave. I'm like, I know. Like it's cause it's like a sense of grounding and like being finally here. And I bet if you listen to our interviews, you can see and hear and feel the difference, but this stuff works. <laughs> That's all I say. It, listen it, to our first interview. Listen to this one, and you can see I, the difference. I, I was talking to um, an amazing voice coach yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it was a voice coach for for Holly Berry. She's a voice coach for Will Smith in uh, in Ollie. Her name is Denise Woods, and we were talking about it. And and um, I was equating it to more of a spiritual basis. So it was fun what she said. But I'm going to still take the spiritual perspective. I said my voice will not speak at the same octave it was when I started this show. I am a full octave lower. I said, I struggle at the very bottom note because my voice has changed too much. And she said, it's actually hormonal. As you get older as a guy, you, you go through a, a, a male menopause and your voice changes. I don't know if it's that or not. I would like to believe it's this spiritual groundedness. And that yeah. is what I believe it is, yeah, is that I am mountain now. Yeah. And when we all are mountain, but I am embodied mountain now. And when we first spoke, I was embodied <laughs> squirrel on crack. <laughs> right. Me too. Like we're now like we're, I'm now landing on planet earth. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when the spaceship comes, they're like, like all those red jets, like you literally on a granite. <laughs> I just think that that's amazing. He couldn't actually, he, he, he said it was a miracle that he was actually able to get through the thing. He's like, he's never seen anything like it. And that's where we were planted. Yeah. And planted with divine guidance. Absolutely. That's all I got. How about you, Michael? I, I think I'm good here. I can hear, I can hear uh, Jessica in the background saying, yes, and that divine guidance also came through Ruru. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Any last words of wisdom? Get the book. Get one for a loved one. Get one for somebody who's struggling in need. Get one for yourself. Dive into the practice. Make it your oxygen. It's the one thing I do every single day. Okay, I eat water. I, I, I eat food. I drink water. I do my automatic writing. I breathe. Those are the the very very basics. But I don't want to go a day. Where I'm not, we are always plugged in. This whole idea of separation and stuff, it's collective amnesia. But with that said, I don't want to go a single day where I'm not talking to spirit or source and going, 
where am I going? What am I doing? Am I in alignment? What do I need to know? We, we've been doing on, on Patreon, and it'll be starting on YouTube in about a week or two, uh, beginning of February. Michael's daily downloads, what the guides are sharing with me for the day. And I don't want to go a single day without a download because that is my everything. That gives me that connection and understanding for everything, everything, even what's going on on a, a DC or a who knows what. It gives me a bigger perspective, picture perspective on everything. Woohoo. Woo! Get the book, Amazon, your local bookseller. Support your local bookseller. Aw, the automatic writing experience or automaticwriting.com. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Saying be well, have fun, get awe, and begin diving into awe and changing your life today and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo!